Alright, what am I supposed to do? Shop. You are shop. Shop. I know. What? I've already... S I've actually already seen something. Wait. Wait. Which is these shoes. Because they don't hurt the inside. You know your foot and your, between your toes? Mm -hmm. Flip-flops? They, they hurt your feet, but these don't. How many pairs of flip-flops do you have? Like tons of these things? No, I, no I'm, I definitely am a comfort dresser. But see, look, I'll show you. I can't even bother to untie my shoe. See? Now they're a bit hippie. But that's okay, we can forgive them for that. Because of the comfort level. And then come over here. Because <laughs> I, 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 I've checked this shop out before. These boots here. Right? These are cool. <laughs> ah. I think they are. Anna? Yeah. My friend said they were cool, so I believed her. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> cowboy is in. Cowboy is in. But I don't really like cowboy boots like that. Toe. Yeah, because I just remember we used to make fun of the boys in the school that wore them. <laughs> so I can't bring myself to wear them, because then I'd be a hypocrite. All right, see? I don't know. Are the, the heel too big? They're great. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Are they really comfortable? Yeah. yeah. Because then, then you wear like a short skirt and it makes your legs look really like thin. Long and sexy. Yeah. So we're going to get these boots. Yeah. For your tongue, do you think about stuff like that? Do you have problems with stuff like that or do you not care? What? About what? About your leg. Well, know. everybody does, don't they? <laughs> it's like you're born with it. No. Um, no, I mean, I'm kind of just giving you like a, you know, it's like a known thing, fact, isn't it? Okay. Like these boots because, I mean, I wouldn't want to wear shoes that make my legs look like... Not, um, tree trunks, you know what I mean? That would be stupid. So yeah, these, and then we want to find like a, a frilly, kind of old looking skirt or dress, and then we've got the perfect outfit for stage. So this stuff you'd actually wear before yeah. you tore through? Yeah, because then it's kind of like, it's kind of rock and roll, this, the shoes. And then what you do is you need to find like something feminine, and then something punk, and then you've got the whole package, right? Is there anyone you kind of like <laughs> take inspiration from fashion-wise, um, or this all your own deal in terms of how you do it? I don't know. I think um, who's got good fashion? I don't know. I don't really like anybody. <laughs> Just joking. I don't know. I don't. I, I. I'm pretty messy. Like I'm pretty. I don't. You know those people that just always look like they kind of, their hair's brushed and you know, I'm not like that. Really. But obviously that works for you. So when, yeah. when did you know that it worked for you? When, you, you when I was a kid and I used to look like an idiot. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Anyways. Sorry. I'm not allowed to swear on TV. Where? Like. <laughs> we can take care of the Don't worry about that. Pull them up. Wait a what she's saying in the fashion. All right, so we've got we've got those hippie shoes that I'm going to be wearing a lot in the winter. <laughs> in New York. And the the boots. How much shopping do you actually do on tour when you're actually traveling around? Well, first of all, I'm only, there's only boys with me, so it's hard. So like that's why Anna was here. So I was like, please come shopping with me. Um, I try to, but you know, when you're kind of in Missouri or in, um, you know, I don't know, Mississippi, there's not, you always think that you'll find something great at the Salvation Army, but, you know, there's really nothing, right. you know. And then you get that thing like, who wore it before you thing, who died in it. Uh -oh. You know those 90s, that, those like lingerie things, you think like, someone probably died in that and you're wearing it. Do you tend to want to be more feminine because of all the guys you're around, or the other way around? You're in the both more of a masculine because you're with guys all the time. Well, <laughs> um, I don't know. I think that, um, what, dress-wise? Yeah. 
Um, well, when you're living on a tour bus and you're, you know, there's no shower and it smells like urine, <laughs> the bus, then it's hard to be feminine, you know. I mean, I, you know, it's hard to kind of think about that stuff. You're just trying to kind of not get dirt on you. It's pretty disgusting. You know? No, it's all right. But, you know, it, um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> He's laughing at me. <laughs> Laughing at your jokes. <laughs> I know that. Um, so, see, I like hats too. I'm, I'm, I've, I've come across like a tomboy, but I guess I am kind of. No. What do you think, Anna? Yeah, it's cute. Everyone's wearing hats now. I can't do that. When you actually you're in a hat, like a little EPK thing we got with your interview, you're in a hat yeah. with your hair all tied up. Yeah. But everyone loves your hair. So is that like a thing where you, people want to see your hair, but you don't mind? You just. Yeah, I have huge fans. They all want to see my hair. <laughs> Just talk about my hair. Um, it's 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 more of, of you know kind of it's practical. Getting having long hair gets really annoying sometimes. But, yeah. but it was cool. I was wearing this hat, and now it's the minute you see it on in Urban Outfitters, the the, the outfit, you know it's like you've got to stop wearing it. Even though out, Urban Outfitters is like heaven, kind of because it's mm -hmm. cheap, good clothes. But um, then, you know, everyone's wearing it, you know. So now now these hats, right, they're like the thing. And everyone's buying them and stuff. Like, you see everyone wearing them. And so you, that means you have to stop wearing them because then you just look like everybody else. Yeah, and I have lots of those hats, and I've just got to stop wearing them. It's really sad, isn't it? But it's true. I know, and just people just take smile. <laughs> <laughs> Sell them on eBay. <laughs> Look at these. Are these disgusting? Do I, I maybe I need uh, these are cool, right, Anna? Or not really? Yeah, I'm gonna forget about these by the time summer comes along. But if it was summer, I'd buy them. <laughs> what made you want to come in here originally? Because I, actually, I, I, every time I come to LA, which isn't that often, but when I come here. I like the shop. There's, I've always found something in here. It's kind of weird and eccentric. These flowers are cool, you know. But the thing is, they go like that, so it just looks like silly. Is there a place like this in New York, or do you have to go um, to? Is there a good place? There's not really, no. Yeah. Where's the shop in New York? I'm sure the stores are always good. Um, Urban Outfitters. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's lots of good secondhands. There's some great place, places down on Ludlow, you know, down the lower, lower east side. Um, but, yeah, this. All the great places are, they're getting really expensive, you know, like that place on Elizabeth, um, Mail. Beautiful clothes, so expensive. Please give me free clothes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on, now I've got to pay. Yeah, do you want to charge me or do you want to give it to me for free? <laughs> well, well, uh, He's got my, you got my, gonna, my coat. Do a big plug for it. Yeah. <laughs> big plug. Can I get a discount? Please. What do you need? I need, I need, no, I need my, my, yeah. All right. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, wait. I'm going to just pay by credit card instead. Take this. Oh, no, I've got money. Yeah. yeah. What about when you want to get a little glammed up? Oh, no, I do. Okay. Else? What, what else do you like to wear? No, I can never pronounce her name. Kellyon Adeli. Kellyon Adeli. Most beautiful clothes in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But just like. You have to get more to pay. <laughs> to pay for them. No, I mean, what else do I like? God, um, really, I don't like when people look like they've been dressed from the same, you know what I mean? Like when it's just like all matching and stuff. I kind of like to mix, you know, I like to, I would like to wear like a really nice dress and then wear it with sneakers or something just to kind of, also, I like, you know, I like to be able to run out of any situation very quickly. 
I can't put my shoes on. <laughs> but, um, so, so that's why these shoes are good and those shoes are good because you can, you know. And when I'm on stage, I like to kind of fall all over the place and jump around and stuff. And every time I've worn heels, I've kind of tripped over myself and made a fool of myself. You look at what other like women in the world right now are wearing. Does any of that matter to you? Um, I think about it quite a lot. <laughs> no, I, I, what, does it matter to me? Not really. No. Yeah. Matters more what they're playing. I mean, I think Cheryl Crow looks cool. But she's got her thing, you know, like the leather kind of rock and roll thing. But um, these are Gola. These are good. You know Gola. They're no. old, like, no. sneakers from the 70s, I mean. And they just started making them again. I thought it was really article about that, actually. So. And I can't get them on. <laughs> you need to buy a vintage pair. Those are the brand new ones? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, do I I don't like when people look like they've been styled, you know? Yeah. And it's not them. Right. And I do like to dress up, you know? It's fun. I, you know, I have loads of makeup and I just don't wear it, but I love makeup. And it's that thing of being a girl and kind of, you know, going into your mom's closet and stealing everything. Uh, Here you go. Thank you. Thanks for letting she use a spot. So, um, I know I don't look like I care about clothes right now. <laughs> but I do, I do. I've just been on, I've been on tour for like three weeks, so. You look fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Let's get right. one shot of you just like walking in. It's just hard work because you kind of, um, it's like, it's like going swimming in the middle of the ocean and like, do, do you go, like, you're like, there's nothing around and like, I, when I got to LA, I was like, oh my God, like civilization. <laughs> I know this is going to piss a lot of people off. <laughs> so I started again. No, it's, um, it's, I've basically only really been in New York in America, you know, and so it's like, it's kind of a lesson in. You know, I'm really getting a taste of America, and like, you know, driving through and a lot of fast food. Um, you know, definitely turning into a junk food addict. A yeah, literal taste. Yeah, and you get really, it's funny because in the beginning of the tour, you're really like, you wear dresses on stage and you're really kind of, you know, think makeup on and, and like after a week, you're just like, tracks your pants, you know, sweater on stage. Because you just, you know, it's hard to kind of, you know, stay in that mindset. And also, I'm just with boys, you know. Everyone in the bus is, you know, burping and <laughs> being generally unattractive. And so I kind of am supposed to be the, you know, feminine, uh, what's it, um, light. <laughs> to bring in. Well, you know, advice with girls and, I don't know. When you're going through some of these items, you're talking about that. Batman. Oh, well, I'm sure it's like... Yeah. All right. Ambience. Sit right in the middle of here. It's probably no, no. Gary getting margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... But when you're playing for, like, in, in some of these other cities, how much do you think about how important it is for them to, to know you and know your music? Yeah, it's, 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 it's great. Um, 
It's great. I mean, the best part of it is playing, you know, but you've got to remember that it's about an hour and then the rest of the day is kind of getting to that show, to that gig. And so a lot of it's waiting around and, you know, but the actual playing of the music is the reason, you know, that I'm there. And that's, and that's amazing. And to see their faces and, and you can kind of watch, you know, them being converted, you know, it's like religion or something. And you're kind of on this pro pilgrimage and you're like, come on, you know, join my religion of music. And it's, 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 it's inspiring. It definitely helps. You know, I wrote my record on the road. We were on the road last year, and I basically wrote this next record. I tried to rock you on, you know, in hotel rooms alone. And, and it, you know, I live in New York. It's really hard to focus on anything, because it's like every night there's a party. Every night there's something to do. And so, you know, you're like, do I write or do I go out? And it's good for me, the road, because, I'm, you know, I'm sitting in the middle of nowhere in some hotel room and you know all I have is my guitar so it's like so it's good and then I have like the kind of the just coming off stage energy of like you know in general I can't even speak English <laughs> adrenaline uh, adrenaline adrenaline right most, yeah. most people think of being on the road though as being kind of a wild time but this is actually quite well the, my first tour last year was wild my band were kind of wild and this one is a little more tame because I, I am, I mean, if, if you live in New York City, you know, and then you're kind of, you're in, I don't know, and you're in Arkansas or something, and they're like, there's a great party, you're kind of like, well, I live in New York City, you know what I mean? Like, I really don't need to go to another party. Like, it's like, it's good for me. I'm like, in the bus drinking tea and um, reading a book, you know, at 11 o'clock. And the boys in the band, they're kind of, you know, prowling around, looking for meat. <laughs> they leave you alone now? Yeah, no, they, I'm joking. They don't, they don't. They're good, actually. But it's different for girls in bands, too. You know, it's not like, I think if I was a male, you know, like lead singer in a band, or you know, then you've got girls running and jumping on you. But I think men find it intimidating or something. I don't know. My mom used to say it to me. She's like, it's because they're intimidated by you. <laughs> mom, why doesn't anyone talk to me? What other kind of lessons, actually? Because how did you learn about like celebrity and, and dealing with fans and dealing with the road? Like, who were your biggest inspirations? Was it your mom? Was it someone else? Um, I'm, you know, I la I'm a Dylan fan, you know. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen Don't Look Back. Sure. I'm sure you have. Um, but he's, you know, he's kind of arrogant, um, and I don't think I am at all. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I have the mind to be like that. But um, I don't know. It's really, you know, because when I started, you know, they kind of do this thing where, you know, you can we can teach you how to talk to people, and you know, because they do that. You know, a lot of people actually get taught how to deal with interviews and all that. And I just. I didn't really want to be that contrived, you know. I know I mess up pretty much any interview I do. I always put my foot in my mouth. I always <laughs> swear, or I, you know, I go. I, my stories are badly told, and jokes are just fall flat on their face. But at least it's me, you know. And it's like I didn't really want to kind of be told how I should kind of, you know, act in that way. So I just kind of, I don't know, do what I do, and I don't really feel like a celebrity, so it's okay. I don't, I, you know, sometimes. You people coming to the show and they, you know, they kind of make you feel really special and all that, but mm -hmm. it's just, you know, nice that people are buying the record. I hope things changed for you since the first record in terms of when people first heard your name and you were, it was all kind of new to you in that sense. Um, it's so strange. It's like, you always think, oh, imagine where I'll be in a year's time, what will happen, and it happens in such a way that you kind of become, it becomes your reality and it's like, can't even imagine what it was like before or something, you know. I remember when I was looking for a deal and playing clubs in New York and and I just thought about, say, a situation like this and be like, oh my God, you know. But it's hard because you just kind of, you kind of, there's always like another thing that you're like, oh, you know, another hill to climb. It's like exhausting. So um, I'm just kind of happy that I'm, you know, I got to make a second record and that I'm proud of it and that I, you know, I didn't have a lot of pressure from the media or from my record company or anyone to make, you know, some huge, you know, top-selling record. Like my first record wasn't like, you know, 
everywhere. And so I didn't really have uh, that pressure, which is kind of good in a way, because I was able to develop in my own pace. Mm -hmm. And you do have your own voice, and there's your own voice shows in the yeah. world. And, and yet people still want to compare you to this. You're pretty good, you're still in this and that. Do you care about stuff like that, or does um, it matter? No, I mean, so far they've compared me to people that I actually like and would listen to. So, you know, it's a compliment in some way because those people are great artists. Um, but I don't hear it, you know, I'm kind of like, but you know, you know, I don't know, it's, it's an odd one. Mm -hmm. I think people need to pigeonhole it, it makes them feel comfortable, you know, because then they can kind of relate. But I have to say I'm guilty of it as well. I mean, when I read reviews and if I see someone, an artist being compared to someone I like or know, then I'm curious to buy it, you know. Mm -hmm. And you need something to kind of measure. Who are your greatest inspirations of musically that are even contemporary people that you emulate and think they really they have something special going on? Um, well, like I said, I like I love Dylan, which is like everybody else, you know. Um, and God, I feel like I've gone blank. I think Bjork is great because she's she seems fearless and she kind of knows what she wants and she's doing it and and. And she doesn't go the obvious route. And I always feel like if you do your thing and you kind of keep going at it, then eventually people will kind of mm -hmm. get it or something. I don't know. She's got this amazing voice. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like, Bleh. I don't know. I'm really, ba I'm really bad at that. Um, I listen to so many old things. You know, there's so much music out there that I still haven't, like, I still haven't kind of gone down the whole Neil Young thing, right? And I was talking to someone the other day, and they're like, oh my god, you really got it. Because I reckon it takes like a good year for each of those artists, or at least, you know, a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because it's like I've got the option between someone like him and someone that is, you know, on the radio right now, and I, I think I'd probably choo choose Neil Young or something. Like I don't know, I mean, that, you know, that's kind of... I, mean, I like some dance music and stuff. I, you know, I, the good thing, London, I grew up in London, there's a lot of great things coming out of there. Mm -hmm. Does that influence you in terms of your music? Do you, do you, look, do you look back at London as, as a musical influence at all in terms of the stuff you grew up with or stuff that's going on there now? Well, I'm not really sure what's going on there now. I think it's probably, you know, the same stuff that's going on here. It's kind of, you know, what sells. But I think they have a greater tolerance for, um, for, for bands that might not make, you know, loads and loads of money because it's smaller and they kind of, I don't know, they seem to, there's a lot of cool stuff that comes out of there, but I am, um, I grew up with Madness and New Order and all that stuff and The Cure, so there's a lot of that in the record, you know, the kind of new wave mm -hmm. thing mixed with kind of the singer-songwriter. You talk about that, how confident were you that that was all going to work? How would you come up with that kind of vibe on yourself? Um, it didn't really, it wasn't kind of contrived it was more my producer was a <laughs> was a craft work fan and like was into all that stuff and I was kind of a Dylan and kind of singer so you know and we kind of were like came together and it, it just worked and um, it was pretty quick and painless so I'm only now thinking about it I'm kind of going oh that's what I did and I think if you think about it too much while you're doing it you, you could mess it up or, I don't know, jinx it or something. Mm -hmm. so, um, that being said, you still write your own stuff. You're still up there with a guitar and yeah. see it with the guitar in your hands. That's still something of an anomaly in today's kind of scenes. Are you conscious of how special that is even? Well, I, you know, you ca you're seeing it more and more, but I really, that's the thing. I didn't also, I didn't want to make a record like that, you know, with just kind of the girl with the guitar and, you know, love songs, blah, blah, blah. And I, I think that that's where Martin came in who kind, who kind of brought the songs and did something different with them. And I, I don't think, I don't hear any records like that record, you know. And, um, and I, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to just be another girl with a guitar or something. Mm -hmm. But I guess I am in some way. <laughs> not just another. <laughs> but, you know, like now, you know, I've been writing and, and I'm thinking of making, like my next record will be like really stripped down and, you know, and that's a great thing. If you've got songs and you've got good songs, then you can go anywhere with them. And the record that I tried to rock you, it's like I could play any of those songs with just a guitar, and hopefully they 
hold their own, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How important is, even for their success, when you're, after you finish this tour, you're probably doing something on your own soon, and you're doing the video, how much do you think about even more acceptance and hits and singles? And well, I'm a Leo. <laughs> So that's my fault. That's my problem. Not my fault. My problem. I'm really proud, and I, you know, in some way, it's hard this this industry because you're really putting yourself out there and for criticism and you know um, judgments and all that. And I, but you know, I do. I, I definitely am competitive, and I want people to hear my music. It's very, you know, you put a lot of love and a lot of time, and 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 you kind of believe in it, and you. Then you hear what else is out there, and you're like, you know, this deserves to be heard, you know. So of course, I, I want to do what I can to, to get, you know, it out there. But you know, I also believe that everything. I have to believe this because it kind of keeps me sane. That you know, everything's a blessing in disguise, and that everything, you know, there's a reason for everything, and one's time comes when it's right, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. I think the drink got to me now. What? I think the drink got to me now, too. I know, I'm like, oh, I'm just laying out, i I know. Um, I'm tipsy. When, <laughs> when you have so much personal stuff on an album, because it's not as real, it does have a real personal kind of feel to it. What's it like singing it, though, these, to these people that you've never seen before? Um, do you think about them as you're singing or in your own world? How does that work? To me, it just seems like the only way to do it. I don't understand how you why you would write a song that wasn't personal and, you know, wasn't a way of getting your issues out or getting your feelings out there and dealing with them in some way. I mean, that's the reason I started writing. I didn't write because I wanted to sell millions of records or because I wanted to be famous. I mean, I was like 14 and I was kind of, un you know, a scared teenager, you know, and I, and, and I you know, I found solace in music, and th and that was the reason I started. And and I think that even if I gave up music, I would keep writing songs. So it's like I, I'm totally like lost where we, where the question was. I think I'm dealing with it. <laughs> like blah, 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 blah. But um, yeah. Is that was I on the right track? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Am I drawing it up completely? What was what was the question? Yes, I <laughs> so it, it, Personal science. <laughs> Basically, I don't see the point, you know, I, 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 and I think, um, I like to, I like that, I like to kind of, not shock, but I, you know, it doesn't, it feels like there's enough sec um, secrecy in there that people wouldn't, you know, completely, I'm not there completely naked with, you know, my heart, like, on there, on the floor, mm -hmm. there's still kind of, things remain beneath. Hidden doors. Hidden doors. God, I'm fucking so much shit. We'll, we'll finish this up. The doors all help us <laughs> with the smallest squeaks in the back. Throw some shots of the door. <laughs> <laughs> just, just lastly, because it ties into all yeah. the fashion stuff too. Just talk about just individuality. Yeah. How important that is to you. Because it, it, with the clothes you wear and even your songs, just being an individual, was that something important for you even since you were a kid? Probably. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's, you know, I think that's why I kept doing music, because it was what made me an individual you know I wasn't very good at academics and um, and then I found this thing that brought people in and I think that's why people you know dye their hair pink or wear you know whatever you know wear outrageous outfits because they want to stand out and so I think music does that more for me than my clothes I don't really kind of try to get attention by what I wear I mean I I definitely don't think I don't like to wear what everyone else is wearing, so, you know, but I don't, I definitely don't, I'm not one of those people that are like, you know, bright pink, you know, stilettos, fishnet tights, and, because I'm just, like I said earlier, I really like to be able to run away from any situation, you know, and, you know, I don't like to be weak either, and I feel like sometimes if I'm wearing, I've got one pair of high heels that are wicked, because it's like, you can totally run away in them, and not fall. <laughs> But those little tiny ones, it's like you're completely a victim, you know what I mean? Like you're like, I know some, I know some people that can like, haul up, haul us. <laughs> yeah. But you make your own thing work. Yeah, I do, I do. I don't know if, I don't know if, I know that if I walk down the red carpet, 
what's her name, Joan Rivers, would probably have a fit and a, and a field day on me. But then I would just tell her that she looks like some weird alien and <laughs> she needs to sort herself out, you know what I mean? Anyways. That'll be the whole point. All right, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Okay.